Hello, and welcome to Today in History for January 28th. I'm Michael Powell. In yesterday's episode, we remembered the loss of life on Apollo 1. And today, we remember the loss of life in 1986, when the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded after the liftoff. At 11.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, on January 28, 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger lifted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida, and Krista McCullough is on her way to becoming the first ordinary U.S. civilian to travel into space. McCullough, a 37-year-old high school social studies teacher from New Hampshire, won a competition that earned her a place among seven-member crew of the Challenger. She underwent months of shuttle training, but then, beginning January 23rd, was forced to wait six long days as the Challenger's launch countdown was repeatedly delayed because of weather and technical problems. Finally, on January 28th, the shuttle lifted off. 73 seconds later, hundreds on the ground, including Krista's family, stared in disbelief as the shuttle broke up in a forking plume of smoke and fire. Millions more watched the wrenching tragedy unfold on live television. There were no survivors. In 1976, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, unveiled the world's first reusable manned spacecraft, the Enterprise. Five years later, space flights of the shuttle began when Columbia traveled into space on a 54-hour mission. Launched by two solid rocket boosters and an external tank, only the aircraft-like shuttle entered into orbit around the Earth. When the mission was completed, the shuttle fired its engines, reduced its speed, and after descending through the atmosphere, landed like a glider. Early shuttles took satellite equipment into space and carried out various scientific experiments. The Challenger disaster was the first major shuttle accident. In the aftermath of the disaster, President Ronald Reagan appointed a special commission to determine what went wrong with the Challenger and to develop future corrective measures. The Presidential Commission was headed by former Secretary of State William Rogers and included former astronaut Neil Armstrong and former test pilot Chuck Yeager. The investigation determined that the disaster was caused by the failure of an O-ring seal in one of the two solid fuel rockets. The elastic O-ring did not respond as expected because of the cold temperature at the time of the launch which began a chain reaction of events that resulted in the massive loss. As a result, NASA did not send astronauts into space for more than two years as it it redesigned a number of features of the space shuttle. In September of 1988, space shuttle flights resumed with successful launching of the Discovery. Since then, the space shuttle was carried out numerous important missions, such as the repair and maintenance of the Hubble Space Telescope and the construction of the International Space Station. On February 1 of 2003, a second space shuttle disaster rocked the United States when the Columbia disintegrated upon re-entry of the Earth's atmosphere and all aboard that shuttle were killed. Despite the fears that the problems that down Columbia had not been satisfactorily addressed. Space shuttle flights resumed on July 26 of 2005 when the Discovery was again put into orbit. The space shuttle program formally ended on October 31st of 2011 after its final mission on July of 2011. A second day of tragedy for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the loss of the Challenger. For Today in History, I'm Michael Powell. Join me again tomorrow, won't you? Let's see what that date brings to mind. Till then, watch this.